Hi, my name's Kerry Badham. I'm from Fancy Cakes by Linda, and today I'm going to show you how to paint this edible gold effect on the side of your cake. It's very, very simple. The first things you need is some edible art. I use the bright gold, but it comes in many different shades, so it's entirely up to you. Some rejuvenator fluid. I've got a paintbrush, standard paintbrush from the DIY store, and I have a small paintbrush for touching up, and just the the plate to use as my paint palette. As you already can see, I've done the top two tiers of my cake and all I want to do now is just this area around here. So it's very, very simple. All you need to do is to pop some of the edible gold powder onto your plate, add some rejuvenated fluid, not too much, otherwise it'll be too watery. If you don't do enough, then it'll be quite thick. Mix it together and just simply use your paintbrush in downward strokes, going all the way around the bottom tier of your cake. What you will find is that the rejuvenated fluid does dry out quite quickly, so you'll need to keep topping it up. The nice thing about this effect is that you don't need to be too particular about a pattern. You just randomly paint your lines straight down and you get this really nice textured brush finish as you go round. And what I do is I just neaten up around the top to give it a nice edge on the side of my cake with a paintbrush. So you need a, a steady hand for this. And I just give it a nice, a nice rim all the way around. There you go, a very nice, simple and effective way to decorate the sides of your cake. Roll out your flour paste to approximately two millimeters thick and using your five petal rose cutters, cut out one of each size. Place your three five petal rose shapes on your firm foam former pad and using the large end of your FMM ball tool, soften the edges of your flower shapes. Your ball tool should be half on the flower and half on the foam pad. Roll a ball of green flower paste. You want to make sure that it isn't too big. It needs to fit neatly inside the smallest size of the first petal that we're going to use, which is the 40 millimeter five petal rose. 
Using your FMM knife and scriber tool, cut an incision in the top to divide it into three, just like the photograph. Place the smallest of the five petal row shapes onto your non-stick board and using your FMM knife and scriber tool, remove one of the petals, just like the photograph. Add a little water to the centre of the four petal flower shape that we now have. Place your bud that we made earlier in the centre of it and then start to lift your petals all the way round. You can see that each petal overlaps the one before. Place your 50mm 5 petal row shape on your non-stick board. Add a little water in the centre and then place the bud with the inner layer of the petals in the centre of it. Using your fingers, pinch each of the petals round the edge of your flower. You will see your flower starting to take shape. We are now adding the third and final layer to our succulent flower. Just as we did previously, add a little water to the centre, pinch each petal and place the other part of the flower that we've already made in the centre. Place your flower in your flower former. Then using small pieces of kitchen towel, separate the petals in the former. This will give your flower some movement and definition and allow spacing between the petals as they dry. Once your flower is completely dry, remove the pieces of kitchen towel that we placed in between the petals to give your flower some shape. We now want to dust the edge of the petals. So using your red edible food dust or tints and a dry paintbrush, brush the edges of your petals and the center of your flower. Boil a little water in a saucepan and wave your flower over the top. This will set and blend the colors that we've added to the edge of our petals. Your first succulent is now complete. Roll out your green flower paste to approximately 2mm thick and using all three sizes of the bridal lily cutters, cut out one of each. Place your flower shapes on your firm foam former pad and using the large end of your FMM ball tool, soften the edges of your flower shapes. Your ball tool must be half on the flower and half on the foam pad. Roll out your green flower paste to approximately 2mm thick and using the smallest cutter, cut out another of the flower shapes. Place the flower shape that you've just cut out on your firm foam former pad and using the large end of your ball tool again soften the edges of your flower, ensuring that the ball tool is half on the flower and half on the pad. Place one of the smaller flower shapes that we've cut out onto your non-stick pad and using your FMM knife and scriber tool, cut off the three rounded petals, just as I've done in the photograph. Roll a small ball of green flower paste. You want it small enough to fit inside the three individual petals that we've just cut out. Using your FMM knife and scriber tool, cut a three-way incision in the top. Wet the petals approximately halfway up and place them around the bud, just as I've done in the photograph. Place the largest of your flower shapes in your flower former and wet the centre of your flower shape. Place the second largest flower shape on top, making sure that the petals sit in between the one on the bottom. Wet the centre and add the smallest of your flower shapes on top, again making sure that the petals sit in between the other ones. Add a little water to the center of the last petal that you've just placed in your flower former and place the bud with the three petals around the outside in the center. Then using small pieces of kitchen towel, separate the petals in the former. This will give your flower some movement and definition and allow spacing between the petals as they dry. Once your flower is completely dry, you can move the pieces of kitchen towel and place on your non-stick pad. We are now going to add dust to the edges of our petals and the bud using a dry paintbrush and the pink food colouring dust. 
boil a little water in a saucepan and wave your flour over the top. This will set and blend the colours that we've added to the edge of our petals. Your second succulent flower is now complete. Roll out your green flower paste and using your rose calyx cutters, cut out one of each size. Place the large end of your FMM ball tool at the top of the petal and drag the ball into the centre of the calyx. Continue section on every petal on your rose calyx. What you will see is your rose calyx starts to lift up and form a shape on its own. Repeat this action for the two remaining rose calyxes. Place your smallest rose calyx on your non-stick mat and using your FMM knife and scriber tool, remove one of the petals. Arrange the four remaining petals into a shape as I have done in the photograph. Place your largest rose calyx in the flower former. Wet the centre with a little water. Place your remaining calyx on top, making sure that the petals sit in between the ones originally in the flower former. Use small pieces of kitchen towel to support and hold the petals while drying. Once your flower is completely dry, place it on your non-stick mat. You can now apply some aubergine edible food colour to the edges of your petals. Boil a little water in a saucepan and wave your flower over the top. This will set and blend the colours that we've added to the edge of our petals. Your third and final succulent is now complete.